Hey everyone and welcome to this next video tutorial. So in this one I'm going to be doing a bit of freehand on this White Scar Captain's cloak. Uh, so in this area on here I'm going to be doing the White Scar chapter symbol. Uh, I've done a tiny little one on the backpack. <laughs> Obviously this one's going to be a bit bigger. So I'm going to take you through some of my uh, tips and process behind how I do that kind of freehand work. Um, this one's going to be a bit tricky, so I'm going to do my best to make it work with the uh, fold there. Um, but yeah, hopefully, you know, that will be helpful for uh, any of you out there who may even be painting this model as well or you know another model that's got a, a cloak like this with a fold right in the middle that um, sometimes can make a bit hard to paint something on there so yeah that's what we're going through today all right one of my major recommendations which is pretty obvious is to have some reference material in front of you um, within view while you're uh, painting so <laughs> this is a old Space Marines Codex. Uh, it's, yeah, it's the most recent one I've bought, <laughs> which was a long time ago. Anyway, um, so obviously we've got the White Scars symbol there, which we're going to be uh, painting today. So what I like to do is to think of approaching this in a way of breaking the design down into shapes. Um, so, the, I mean, the white scar symbol is a, a symbol is a really quite a simple design. Um, there's only two colors and there's only really a few shapes there. Um, but, um, yeah. So the first thing I like to do is sort of do a faint sketch of that on the cloak or, well, you know, whatever surface you're painting. So I'll go, th go through that now. And, um, yeah, as I said, breaking this down into a couple of different shapes. So you've obviously got this kind of skewed rectangular shape in the back there, that, um, yellow part. And then the, you know, the lightning bolt kind of thing going on. All right. So, uh, I'm using a nice fine detail brush, broken toad size, size zero, uh, for obvious reasons. Um, I'm only doing kind of the line work at the moment, but I want to get nice, fine, faint lines um, just sketching out the design because you can kind of run into the issue of of getting the design wrong in this stage. You, um, you don't want big, thick lines that you're going to have to correct. Um, you know, we want, we want to make any corrections as easy as possible. Um, so that is also influenced by the color that, uh, you use as well. So because I'm painting a, a dark cloak, um, it's basically black. Uh, I'm going to use Scaven Blight Dinge, which is a kind of a darker gray. Uh, that way, if I do need to correct any issues with the sketching, it's not going to be too hard because it's not too, too far away from the black it's going to be quite easy to go over that um, or, you know, to hide any of those those mistakes. So first thing I like to do, find the middle of the cloak. So this is where it sits on the guy's back. So right about there is where the middle point is going to be. So, and if we just, I haven't got any paint on the brush, but if we just draw an imaginary line down there, we we can probably say that this, the, that reflex of the, that fold there is where the middle of the cloak is. So from there, you know, you've got to think about how big you want to make it. So looking at your design and working out, uh, you know, using parts of it, like I said, you know, breaking it down to shapes, using parts of the design as a reference for other parts, um, that probably doesn't make sense, but <laughs> I'll try and explain it now. So, 
you know, as with a wax car design, it has that skewed rectangular kind of shape in the background, like I, I mentioned. So drawing to the middle of the cloak, the height of it, I'm probably going to go with something like that. So the top of the lightning bolt's probably going to sit about there, and then the bottom of the lightning bolt sit about there, which is not too bad. So what I was talking about before, looking at the design of the logo, the symbol, I know that the height of it here is roughly, it's probably about three times as wide. So you can even kind of like use your, just eyeball it, maybe even, let's just sketch that line in there. So this is the height of that rectangular part. And then what I'm going to do is even just mark out, okay, so that's, you know, same one height. Actually, if it's three times as wide, we want to probably go one and a half times the height. I hope this is making sense. <laughs> Simple mass. <laughs> and then, once again, um, on, on that side is going to be where, you know, the other point will be, but it's going to be covered up by this side of the cloak. Um, so you, the only way, you know, the only way to kind of get around this is just to use your imagination to eyeball things, um, so to speak. And, um, yeah, there, there, there can be a little bit of guesswork involved. I mean, this, you know, like this is a, a weird design cloak. Um, it's nice the way it flows and, and folds, um, but, you know, it's not the best kind of cloak to do freehand on. Um, so looking at the width there, I know that as the that rectangle skews out, it comes out and it tapers out to a higher point than the width. So what I can actually do is trying to keep things square with the bottom of the cloak is just start to sketch out the actual outlines. That line's probably going to be a bit thick, but this is why we're using the, the grey because it's going to be easy to correct anyway. And then the top lines So you can probably only just see that, but I'm kind of just getting a rough shape of where the rectangle sits. So as I mentioned, it tapers out and the, those points sit higher on the corners. So just, this is, I'm kind of just eyeballing this at the moment and then So that line that I drew in there ends up just becoming a guide and we're going to end up painting over it almost entirely. So and then it kind of has that curve there. Yeah, this is, you know, looking pretty rough at the moment, but um, it's not it's not a huge problem. So I'm just putting in that curve on that side now as well. And just using my imagination and kind of eyeballing where, you know, the, that corner will sit. You know, probably around here somewhere. So now that that's sketched out, um, it 
it's time to start doing the lightning bolt. Alright, so onto the lightning bolt. So, the bottom of the bolt, I'm probably going to sit about there. So, looking at the design though, it does sit off centre. That, that very bottom point of it. So I know that the centre line's about there. Probably a bit lower actually. Go there. So you'll notice that I'm putting in these little points, little dots. Uh, I find this is the best way to do the kind of like the first stage of the sketching for a, you know a more complex shape. You know, other than just that kind of rectangle. Even though you know with the rectangle, I did do it some dot points as well. Uh, yeah, dotting it out and then kind of doing a, a bit of a connect the dots and, and joining it all up um, is the, I find, a good way to start, you know, planning things out. So that's our center line there. So I know that this part comes down about there. And it comes up to say about and then And then in the very top of the lightning bolt. All right. It's um it is a really weird visual thing to try and work on a curve as well because uh, everything looks more narrow than it actually is so sometimes it's hard to kind of tell if you've got the right thickness until you start connecting the dots so which I'm going to start doing now so this bottom bit I know looking at the design that that connects all the way up to this dot so I'm drawing a line All the way down to there. Line's not showing up so well in some areas, but that's okay. And then also, I should have dotted out. Um, I think that should probably come. Yeah, it looks about right. Dot out that bit as well.
So, like I said, doing the design on the curve there does get a bit confusing. So, what I'm going to do is, um, I think it probably needs to be a little bit th uh, thicker, the overall kind of design of the, the lining bolt. So, easy enough to do that. I just need to stretch it all out a bit. Add a bit of a bit more weight on this side, I think. That's looking a bit better. All right. So now that we've got the design sketched out what we do next is start to introduce the color. So what I'm going to do is go over these bits, uh, the, the sketch work um, with the uh, corresponding colors from the, des from the design. Um, and just as a general rule for when I approach this, um, well, more so when, when we start introducing um, and filling in the colors is to work on the areas that are, a higher first. What I mean by that is, you know, obviously this lightning bolt is sitting over that rectangle. So if I, you know, if I was to start filling in the color of this yellow bit here and I end up kind of going over the design, you know, that edge there of the sketch work, then I'm going to lose that as a guide. So it's best to, to go with that first then you know, and then fill it in, you know you've got that sorted out, uh, and then you start doing the lower parts. Um, so this, you know, this yellow bit that's sitting underneath, uh, that way, you know, even if you do make some mistakes, at least you've got a good um, idea of where that, that design is sitting. Um, so, with the red, I'm going to start going over with corn red. So again, I'm still, I'm still using the Fine brush. Just getting nice clean lines with that. Simple as that, getting that sorted out. Um, so now I'm going to switch to a larger brush and just start to fill that in. Okay, so I've just roughly filled in the lightning bolt uh, and now I'm going to move on to using the red again to go over the outline of this skew if rectangle sort of shape. So just going over our guides and um, I'm actually, I'm just going to do this outside line for the red. You can see from the design that it's actually 
like a thicker line. Um, I'm not going to start to fill that in yet because the yellow could get a bit messy. So if I do the yellow first, I've got a bit more freedom and flexibility with that. Uh, and then I can uh, go over and make that red border a bit more bold. So, yeah, pretty easy. Sketch that in. So now getting a bit of Averland Sunset and starting to fill that in. I don't have to go all the way to the edge, um, but I'm gonna go pretty close. And um, let's get a nice coat on there. So I do wanna be careful with this edge here, obviously. Um, not gonna be hard to fix up, but you know, Better to just exercise a bit of caution. And this side as well. tidying up in there. It's a bit of a tricky spot, obviously. Cool. And obviously, I'm going to need a few coats of that yellow. You know, we're painting it over black, so yeah, I'm going to clean that up a bit and then come back and probably do that red border. Okay, I said I was going to do the red border next, but I'm actually going to do... Um, some work on the yellow before I do that, otherwise things are going to get a bit messy. So I've got a, an equal parts mix of Averland Sunset and Mournfang Brown that I'm using just to uh, just to do a little bit of a soft shade on this now. So even if even though it is a two dimensional design, I do want to give it a bit of visual interest. So I'm st I am, you know, still going to do a bit of shading and highlighting just to, um, yeah, make it look a bit more interesting. So um, I also kind of want to make this red border kind of uh, look like it's a bit raised. So this yellow bit's kind of like an, uh, an, an inlaid kind of area. So... I've created a bit of a shade at the top there to kind of emphasize that, like it's kind of a drop shadow. Um, I'm just going to use a bit of uh, Flash Gits Yellow just to highlight a bit on this this raised, raised bit here because it's sitting right at the top of the curve of, or near the top of the curve of the cloak itself. So, yeah, obviously, like I said, even though it is a two-dimensional design, you can give it even more realism by, you know, creating the illusion that the physical surface is influencing what the you know, how the design presents itself in terms of lighting and shadow. Um, I mean, that yellow is looking really nice now. So, I might do... Just going to mix a bit of that flash gets with the Overland Sunset just to kind of tone it down a bit and have a bit of a shadow, a bit of a highlight on this bottom edge here.
Let's feather it out a bit. Um, yeah. So, obviously, you know, if I was to do the red bit before I'd done that, then we'd end up with a bit of a mess. So now, just going to use the same brush and just thicken that border line a bit. Um, and obviously, going forward, the um, red's going to receive a similar treatment as the yellow, getting a bit of shading and highlighting. Um, and I can, at this point, can just clean up that edge there. And a bit on the other side as well. Now I'm going to move on to filling in the the bolt a bit more. Um, getting a bit nicer a base coat on that. All right, so that's after a couple more coats. Just to get it nice. So. I want to do a bit of shading on the red. I'm going to, for the most part, avoid doing too much of that on the lightning bolt because it's quite central. Um, you maybe want the highlighting to kind of help it along a bit more. But um, with a bit of uh, Galvo back, I'm just going to... Uh, Galvo back red, I should say. I'm going to start just sort of darkening these areas in here a little bit. The ones that are sort of sitting in these folds. Obviously down here as well. Um, but I might just do a little bit of a touch of Shading on this bit. For these deep, deeper parts in here, I'm just going to introduce a bit of Abaddon Black around 50-50, just to get it quite dark in there. All right. So that might be it for that, I think. And so for highlighting, I'm gonna start introducing a bit of Evil Suns Scarlet. 
a 50-50 mix with the corn red, which was the base coat. So, I want to get a nice strong highlight happening down the middle here, so I'm just going to sketch that in. And I want, I might come back and shade this a bit more actually because I want that edge to pop and darken that in there so that it kind of offsets that a bit. So, getting that red down to a glazing consistency. I just want to define that a bit more, like I said. Just gently shading that. Okay, so I've just picked out those edges a bit with that highlight mix. Um, just to get them to stand out a bit more. And um, when you're working with black, it's nice when um, doing these kind of designs to use quite a strong highlight right on the edge which will help to um, make it pop a bit more off of the black. Otherwise, it can tend to kind of just sink into the background 
which you really don't want to happen. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and, and paint this a bit more, refine things a bit more. But as far as this tutorial goes, uh, I think I'm going to leave it at that. So I hope that gives you uh, something to go off of um, to help out with how to approach doing some freehand design. Um, even though... Uh, it was done on a quite a tricky surface. Um, I think it's actually turned out pretty good. Um, and yeah, I hope that's kind of even helped um, someone who's looking at doing a freehand on a similar kind of surface that's not just a flat surface, which, I mean, obviously you can apply the same principles um, to painting something on a flat surface. Um, it would just be a lot easier. Um, but yeah, I hope you know, someone maybe in this kind of specific situation that's helped out. Um, yeah, so thank you for watching um, and thank you for your continued support.